In today's video, I will demonstrate how you can remotely install a backdoor in a Windows 10 machine. In today's video, we're going to be using MSF Venom and also Metasploit to penetrate our Windows 10 machine. What I'm going to be doing in this video is purely for educational purposes. On my Windows 10 machine, I have deactivated my firewall and I have turned off Windows Defender, which is why this hack is possible. The skills I'm demonstrating here is how you can use Metasploit and how you can use MSF Venom. Now, you can find out a little bit more about MSF Venom by having a look at what I'm just hovering my mouse around here. If you want to have a look at different tutorials we are recording as part of our ethical hacking program at Steam Labs, you can go to our domain here. If you want access to some of our lesson slides, do get in touch with us. To begin today's session, I'm going to be using this command here, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about how this command works. So MSF Venom is going to be the tool which we use to penetrate our Windows 10 machine. Now, what we have here, along with the MSF Venom tool, we have specified our operating system. We have specified that it is using 64-bit architecture, and we've also specified the IP address which we are going to use when we create a backdoor into our Windows 10 machine, and also the port that it is going to be using. Now, there are different ways which we can do this. One of the ways is you could create a phishing email and try to force somebody into downloading a PDF, a JPEG file, or maybe even a .exe file, which is a Windows executable file. In today's session, I'm going to be pretending to ask a user to install Google Chrome. So typically, when you download Google, you get a Chrome setup.exe file. And this is what I'm going to use for the purpose of this educational video today. So inside my Kali Linux window, I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm typing so it is nice and clear. And when I start typing in some of these commands here, you're going to see that I'm automatically prompted because I've used this command before. So this is the command which we're going to be using in Kali Linux today, which I just explained here. And this is going to create our executable file. And this is what's going to allow us to create that backdoor into our Windows 10 machine. Now, so you can see where this file is at the moment, I'm going to do ls inside my Kali Linux machine, and you'll be able to see that it's created this Chrome setup.exe file, and this is our malicious file. The next thing I am going to do is I'm going to start running a Python server. So again, you'll be able to see it in this window here. So we want to run a Python script in our terminal window, if Python doesn't work for you, try typing Python 2 or 3 after Python. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press on up and you can see here I'm just writing Python. Again, if it doesn't work for you, write Python 2 or Python 3. And this is going to start a HTTP server, which is using port 8080. Now that I've done this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new terminal window in Kali Linux. And we are going to have a look at how to use Metasploit. In order to open up a new window, the shortcut command is Control, Shift, and T. Now that we've done this, we want to log into Metasploit. And in order to do that, you need to type in MSF console. And then we've got two options. We can either load the main menu and it will present us with all of the different exploits and auxiliary options. Or if you do hyphen Q, we will be able to see that it doesn't load with those options. So you can see for the demonstration purposes of this video, I'm going to press MSF console and you will be able to find and see the Metasploit framework being displayed here. If I open up a new window and if I type MSF console hyphen Q, you can see here that there is no introductory information on Metasploit this time. We just get MSF6. Now, next thing we're going to do as I said, this is available or should be available underneath this video, otherwise visit our blog page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use an exploit now. So I need to type in the command use exploit multi handler. And this is going to be 
one of the first things we need to do in order to create the exploit for our Windows 10 machine. Once we, once we have done this, we need to set a payload. So what we need to type in is set payload. And then we are going to have our Windows operating system and the architecture that it's using. So it could be x86 or it could be x64. In our case today, we're using a 64-bit machine. Then after this, we are going to type in meterpreter and then reverse TCP. So meterpreter and reverse TCP. Now, unlike the other Kali commands which we're using here, we have to actually open up Metasploit so it doesn't remember the commands which we've used previously. Checking that my spelling is correct, I'm going to press on Enter. And what we're going to do now is we're going to write the word lhost and then lport. And I was going to say exploit for a minute, but we're not quite there yet, so I'll come to that in a moment. So we need to put in the uh, IP address of our Kali Linux machine. So we're going to type in set lhost. And my IP address is 104. Okay, and what we're doing here, this is the IP address we're going to use of our Kali Linux machine so we can create that backdoor from Windows 10 to Kali Linux. Once I've done this, I'm going to press Enter and we need to set a port for it to use. So I'm going to type in set L port and our port was 1234. You can use any port you want. You should be aware that there are over 65,000 ports which we could use. I'm using port 1234. Now, at this point here, we want to launch our exploit. And it's going to try to make a connection with our Windows 10 machine. And as soon as somebody has downloaded that executable file, it's going to give us direct access to their machine. So if you've ever been phished and they've asked you to download a file, this is the type of thing and the type of backdoor it would create for a hacker. So you do need to be careful when you're opening up attachments and downloading files from your email. Now, there are two ways that we can do this. We can either type run or we can type exploit. Both of these methods are going to launch the exploit on our Windows 10 machine. Now, in order for me to carry out the next part, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to also record the screen of my Windows 10 machine. And there are a couple of different things that we can do here. So number one, we can download the file. Or number two, which is the better one, is we create uh, a phishing email. And we try to get our victim to download that .exe file. Now, you can see here that I have just downloaded the .exe file. You couldn't see me download it. I'm going to put a very short clip after this video so you can see but I'm now on my Windows 10 machine if I type in shell what it's going to show me here is that hopefully I'm on my Windows 10 machine let's see and wait for this to respond and here we go you can see now that I am using Microsoft Windows version 10 so we have now got access to Dan's machine. So this is our victim computer today. Remember, as I said, educational purposes, I own this computer, so I'm essentially hacking myself here. Now that we're on here, we can type in a couple of things. First of all, if you want to have a look at the different files on here, we can type in help, and you'll be able to see the different files which are on our Windows 10 machine. I'm not really interested in any of this information. I'm going to type on exit, and what I'm going to do is type help again and this is going to launch for different tools which are available in Metasploit and these are the tools which are available for our hack today so what we're able to do here is we are able to do things or carry out things like take a snapshot of a webcam uh, we're able to stream their webcam now these attacks are sophisticated but not as sophisticated as some of the attacks which you see online. When I run this command, we'll actually see the light turn on on the webcam, unfortunately. And we can also do another couple of things here. So what I can do is I can log what the person types on the keyboard here. So this is a key logger. So to begin with, uh, I am going to take a snap of the webcam here. And I'm going to turn my laptop around so you don't see me. 
and a bit of free advertising here you're going to see my Steam Labs logo so webcam underscore snap Ooh, let's spell it correctly enter and that is a snapshot of my Steam Labs logo now to prove that this is me and that this is actually working here I'm going to hold my hand in front of the webcam and there you go that's my hand and just so you can see how the stream would work as well we can use webcam stream and this will mean that we have a video feed so this is really scary stuff okay so there we go that is my hand okay and my Apple watch isn't responding okay you can see how this works okay uh, next thing which we want to do here is we want to have a look at the keylogger so if I type something on my victim computer is it going to record what I write so what I'm gonna do here is I never remember these commands I need to look at the menu I think it's key scan so if I type on key scan I'm gonna make sure my Windows 10 computer is awake and I'm gonna type in key scan underscore start mm, something failed uh, operation failed incorrect function uh, it doesn't look incorrect to me I'm gonna run it again okay mm, so apparently I am doing something incorrect uh, I'm gonna try typing it the other way around so start key scan no not a listed function so uh, apologies for my errors here uh, key scan start does look correct okay so I'm uh, gonna try it one more time and uh, otherwise I'll be coming back to this uh, a little bit later so I'm just gonna type even if it's failed I'm gonna type something okay so it's failing I'm not gonna worry about that on my uh, victim computer I'm gonna type can you see this message oh I made a typo we're gonna see that typo and to end this we're going to type in key scan underscore dump and that's going to take the information from our victim computer back to this computer and you can see here that uh, you can actually see my message okay so uh, captured these keystrokes can you see this message that's my error here I accidentally wrote H so we have now just successfully recorded the keystrokes on our victim computer Hopefully after watching today's video, you now have a basic understanding of how you can create a backdoor into a Windows operating system for educational purposes. If you have any questions about any of the techniques which we have used today, please do get in touch. And I look forward to seeing you in our next ethical hacking video soon.